You're listening to Robert Holmes Gospel The station that reminds you God is always there The soul loves Jesus Oh my soul Thank you for being a listener and supporter of Robert Holmes Gospel. You're a part of what God is doing here. We need your financial gifts to keep encouraging others. God is always there. To give either a weekly, monthly, or one-time gift, you can easily donate from our app or text the station at 832-930-4684. Remember, no matter what, God is always there. Hello, my fellow believers, my brothers and sisters in Christ. My name is Robert Holmes, and I just want to welcome, but also thank you for listening. Robert Holmes Gospel is a contemporary Christian radio station for encouragement, uplifting, the place to get your praise on, and a place of refuge. We want to be the station you tune into daily, 24-7, when you want to hear a word from God. Stay tuned for words of encouragement from one of our special guest speakers, This speaker loves the Lord. You don't want to miss it. Chosen by right of birth. But then there are others that are chosen out of the situations into which they are thrust. Uh, The Lord said concerning the southern kingdom of Judah, when they were in the midst of their suffering, uh, God saw that they were able to endure hardness. And some of you have been put into some situations where folk expected you to throw up your hands and surrender. But when God saw how you were able to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, when he saw you were able to take pressure and not fall under the pressure, He said to you like he said to Judah in Isaiah 48 and 10, Behold, I have refined thee 
but not with silver. I've chosen you in the furnace of affliction. Is there anybody today that feel like you're in the furnace? Feel like the heat has been turned up? I just want you to know that when the heat is turned up, it's turned up first of all to burn the ropes off of your hand. But it's also turned up so that God can refine you just like the old silversmith that would take a lump of lick, or rather of solid silver, drop it into a melting pot and turn up the heat until that lump of silver would become liquefied. And when it became liquid, all of the impurities would float to the top. And there, that silver refiner would sit with something like a sifter, skimming the top, throwing away the excess, skimming the top, throwing away all of the impurities. And he keeps skimming the top until when he looked into that pot of liquefied silver, he wouldn't see anything but the reflection of his own face. I want you to know that when God turns the heat up, he's only trying to get self out of the way. He's trying to get our way out of the way. He's trying to get those things that don't please him out of the way because he wants to be able to look at you and me as though he's looking in a pot of liquid silver. And he does not see the anger of your grandmother, but he sees his own face reflected in the pot of liquid silver. So you ought to say, Lord, I don't mind you turning up the heat. If turning up the heat will make me more like you, somebody ought to give the Lord some praise. As I close, for what purpose were we chosen? In Ephesians 1 and 4, it says, According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. When God established a pattern for us, as the church of God in Christ, he formed us to be a holy church. I think television has worked against us because we watch and see what everybody else is doing rather than concentrating on why God chose us. He said in 1 Peter 2 and 9, you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are a peculiar people. I made you like that, that you might show forth the praises of him that called you out of darkness and into the marvelous light. I remember as a little boy when folk didn't understand us, we were strange and everybody tried to stay away. If they came on Sunday night, they sat in the back because they scared we were going to sprinkle some stuff on them that would start them to acting like us. But God, in all of our peculiarity, made us a church like no other church in the world. And you got to understand, you are not chosen to be like anybody else. We don't speak in tongues like nobody else. We got to go back to singing our songs that are different to everybody else. We've got to understand that other folk might get the Holy Ghost and act in that little quiet, dignified manner, but he made us, picking them up and putting them down. He made us. And, and, and let me just say this. I don't understand it. When I hear these fellows on television making fun of this church, uh, trying to act like they are mimicking our preachers and mimicking the way our people praise the Lord. You got to remember this church is a hundred years old. Christianity itself is only 2,000 years old. 
So for 5% of the end time time that the church has been in the earth, the church of God in Christ has been established. And we were speaking in tongues and doing what we're doing now. Back when they would throw folk out of the church for just lifting their hand and saying hallelujah. Whenever I turn and hear them criticizing, I just flip to the next channel because they don't even know what they're talking about. How can the kindergarten students teach those who are in the university how holiness ought to operate? God chose us. Can you tell somebody, I'm glad I'm chosen. I'm glad I'm chosen. Uh, glory. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Sit down for a minute. I, I, I got to close this thing. But I'm glad that I know I was chosen. Yeah, I didn't know it when God was getting me ready. Four or five times when I was in within hand's reach of death himself. But God kept me alive for this very day when I was just a little boy. Sit down, y'all. Y'all testify. Y'all mind if I testify? When I was only about nine or ten years old, my sisters will recall, my, my dad had a 22 rifle, a 12-gauge shotgun, and a double barrel. And I was always fun of shooting. If we went to the Mid-South Fair or to an amusement park, all I wanted to do was get my hand on one of those guns and, and shoot at a target. One of those days, my parents were gone. Nobody was home but me. I went and got that 22 rifle and set up some targets in the backyard. And I shot once. It was an automatic. I shot twice. And then the gun jammed. And like a fool, I looked down the barrel trying to see why the gun was jammed and when I turned it away from it pow, it shot my dad never did get on me about it but what he did about the next week or so he sold the gun he had built a little building next door that he was renting sundry store in the front on one side tenants on one side and a couple in the back that happened to be Caucasian and that Caucasian gentleman bought that rifle later on he found out that his beautiful Caucasian wife was dating a black man and he used that same rifle and killed himself death was on that rifle but God said I'm not going to let it kill you about two years later my dad and I had been fishing all the time but we were teaching Bishop J.O. Jr.'s father Bishop J.O. Sr. how to fish we went down the Sardis Reservoir, got down there in rough water, went back into a cove out of the wind, and looked like the thing wasn't going to let up. So my Uncle J.O. and I decided we would go through the woods and see if we could find somewhere to bring the car a little closer. All while we're walking through the woods, you could hear stuff in the underbrush, but never saw anything. Every time I thought it was a snake, Uncle was all, oh, boy, it ain't nothing but a lizard. He was scared too, but he, was, knew he couldn't let me be scared. When we finally got to the boat dock, one of the men from the boat dock was walking with us down a gravel road. 
Now understand, I never saw a, a snake in the woods. But we got into a gravel road. And I'm walking, paying no attention. And the man that was walking with us, he said, uh, stop just a minute. And I stopped. And I looked at him. He walked behind me, got a big old stone, walked in front of me, and dropped it on a water moccasin that was curled up. All I needed to do was take another step or two and would have been meat for a water moccasin. But God said, not yet. Then I had an incident right here in Memphis. It was all over the newspaper. Leaving the 12 o'clock prayer meeting, June 27, 1975. Everybody else had gone, and I'd gone to the office for a few minutes, and as I got ready to get into my car, I looked across the street and recognized the face of this young man. And he was grinning, and then I saw him with something in his hand. I thought it was, at first I said, I wonder what is he doing with that BB gun? Then I realized it was a rifle, a 22 automatic repeating rifle. I got in the car, backed up, proceeded to go down the alley between the old church and the meat market next door. Shots rang out, 14 shots that slammed against the meat market. And he was looking through a telescopic lens. And yet God took 14 bullets and waved those bullets over the top of the car. And, and when, when the thing got to court, oh my God, they said, well, there's no way to understand what happened unless the scope was improperly mounted. Scope wasn't improperly mounted. God just say, I've chosen you for something. And the shocking thing, when we found out what he was angry about, on the Easter Sunday morning, I had preached about the sacredness of life and that God don't intend for nobody, hallelujah, no woman to stay in a situation where Five times a week, you're getting beat up and in danger of your skull getting busted. He thought that I knew that he had taken the pit, the grill off a barbecue pit, and had beat his wife with it. And he was angry because he said I was interfering in his marriage, simply to say that a man shouldn't do that. And a lot of folk in this city, they read that line about the interference in the marriage. And they didn't want to believe that the man was demented until later he killed his own mama, cut her body up, put it in a garbage can, rolled it down the street and dumped it eight years later. And they said, you know, Patterson was right about that man. But the thing about it, some of you are in situations where people don't understand what you're going through. But I want to tell you, that if you are chosen, when the time comes, God will vindicate your cause. I got to give you this last testimony and then I'm going to my seat. 1996, we were on our way, coming back from New Jersey. That was the time I preached for you and your convocation, Bishop Owens. And we got down into Tennessee, about 100 miles east of Nashville. And one of the pastors in Tennessee Fourth, many of y'all know him, Pastor Bill Wright. He was driving the car. Normally, I'd be sitting in the back. But this day, I sat in the front. And we started laughing about something. And I didn't know when he, from the passing lane, started to move across to the right lane and then he was moving so fast and in the back brother Spite said Bill and I looked and saw that he had blacked out driving 75 miles per hour frozen to the stern wheel 
and I'm sitting there opposite him. And as soon as I saw what was happening, I never feared. The Holy Ghost just said, take your left hand and grab the wheel. I grabbed the wheel and started steering. And he said, take the right hand and move this car out of drive in the neutral. Oh, when you've been chosen to do a work for God, even death can't claim you until you do what God has called you to do. Oh, I wish you'd tell somebody, tell five people, I'm chosen, I'm chosen, I'm chosen. Supervisors, superintendents, pastors, Sunday school teachers, go back home with confidence. Don't worry about those lying on you. Don't worry about the ditch diggers. Don't worry about those that want your place. If you are chosen, can't nobody get what God has assigned to you. Come on and give God some praise in the house. Come on and give him praise. Hey, hallelujah. Everybody standing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
keep on lifting me higher. Your love keeps taking me higher. Getting deeper and deeper. Higher. You keep on lifting me higher. Your love keeps taking me higher. Bringing me up higher, higher. Problems on the right, problems on the left oh My God, so you'll be right there Seems like your prayers ain't going nowhere You've been searching for answers everywhere I'm dealing with some situations in your body Better know, oh my God, we'll make a way Pink's the collection, cause you might have had them all Cast your cares on him, but don't fall Praise your way through Faith to strengthen to carry on Praise your way through God will see you through It's only a matter of time The devil's coming strong Who then will he belong? I got the faith the strength to carry on When the enemy comes in like a flood The spirit of the Lord will lift you up Put on the whole arm of God Let me encourage you the battle is born Your joy. Whoa, whoa. He's testing your faith and just wanna know if you will stay in the race. Sometimes it gets hard. Call on the Father. Whoa, whoa. Praise your way through. The strength to carry on Praise your way through God will see you through It's only a matter of time The devil's coming strong Who then will he belong? I got the faith The strength to carry on 